You're watching NC TV. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to NCTV. This week we have an amazing show for you, so let's jump right into it. First up, here at PIC, students have many opportunities to learn and grow through some of the best career technical education programs in the state. One of these programs is right down the hall. It's the auto program. Here at Pathways, this is the automotive and diesel technician program. Um, some of the stuff that these students earn while they're over here for like four ASE entry level one certifications. Um, those certifications are in brakes, HVAC, electrical, and axles and drivetrain. This is a student's project. Um, it is a 1967 uh, Pontiac GTO. We are currently getting it sanded down and ready for paint. We're going to work on getting it fully restored for them. The program is set up and run just like a business. I actually have leaders out there, safety officers out there, things of this nature that actually an actual business would have in place, making sure people are wearing their safety glasses, lifts are set up correctly and things of that. The one we're working on now is our 1977 Camaro. Uh, that's the one that we got the grant for. We're dumping uh, quite a fun, fun pieces inside of it. We're going to put a 383 stroker in it. We're going to fix it up. Students are working on the body work on it right now. Um, we're going to put new interior in it, get it kind of all fixed up and looking really good. And part of that money that we're going to sell after we sell it and auction it off, some of that money will then go back into the auto fund, as was discussed, and then the other, some of it will also go to a charity that the students are looking at donating to. Wow, I need, may need to bring my car down. I wish I could drive. I'm sure you do, Devin. Next up, a poetic production to kick off the season. Human Connection, the Art of Companionship. The nostalgia of childhood, a warm, sleepy feeling, draped in family recipes and simple tradition. The only way to make sense out of change is to plunge into it, move with it, and join the dance. This is the real secret of life, to be completely engaged with what you are doing in the here and now, and instead of calling it work, realize it is play. Next off, we have a local business story. I actually started a business called T Hawk Studio. It's a small fabrication fine metal smithing studio here in Casper, Wyoming. What do I like most about my job? I really like that it connects people through their personal stories into wearable art. Every piece creates its own challenges uh, from just beginning the idea to choosing metals to choosing stones, where to put them, dealing with budgets and deadlines. It can be uh, pretty crazy, but at the end, it's all worth it because you end up getting a piece out of the deal. Every single piece is made using traditional bench techniques, and that basically means that I'm using hand saws, hand files, uh, hand equipment to make these things come to life and so each piece is 100% unique and true to the person who orders it. My ultimate goal would be to learn as much as I possibly can. Metalsmithing is my passion. I really love working with fellow artists and clients and I really like working hard to achieve my goals. So. I want to share it with as many people as possible and just learn as much as I can. My favorite type of event that I like to go to and participate in are definitely the gallery shows. You get a lot more of what each artist is really going for and a lot more expression, a lot more interpretation, and it requires you to think a little bit more. So the gallery shows are definitely the place that I like to show at the most. Wow, that story was a real gem, if I do say so myself. We're lucky here today to have a very special guest. <laughs> uh, Trevor Trujillo, he's the editor-in-chief at Oil City. 
and the co-founder of the Nighthawks podcast. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, recent film by Todd Phillips, The Joker. Uh, thank you for the plug. Uh, it's great to be here, and I'm going to try and figure out what I do with my hands when I talk, because I don't normally do this in front of a camera. <laughs> of course. No. Uh, sometimes, you know, you get that. Anyway, so uh, you recently saw the film Joker, right? Yeah, I, I was kind of late getting there, and uh, was very fortunate that uh, I was unspoiled going into it, but I, I actually just caught it last night. Really, really? Well, I've seen it four times, uh, if that Big wasn't enough. A little bit. <laughs> so uh, let's jump right into cinematography. How did you feel about the way uh, Todd Phillips and his... Uh, yeah, I think directorially and cinematography, uh, everything was great here. Like, it's, it's a well-made movie, it's a well-crafted movie. It watches like an indie film, it doesn't necessarily watch like a, uh, a comic book film or a, a big budget, uh, you know, summertime tentpole movie. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it evoked an era, kind of an ambiguous late 70s, early 80s, we're not quite sure where this falls. And I think that conjures a certain sense of place. I think uh, their vision of Gotham is, you know, we're looking at kind of a, a pre-Giuliani New York standing in for Gotham and uh, kind of the Bernie Getz era of, of street crime back then. And I think it did a really good job of evoking all of that. Uh, what about the grit of the film? It was a very dark, very gritty film. Oh yeah, obviously. I mean, you're you're going back to that time, that time in the late '70s, early '80s, where uh, you know it's it's weird to think about it now, but you know, crime was a lot worse back then. The thing of it now is that we just we have mass media now, and we're just very in touch with it. But uh, it was it was a violent time. There were people getting shot in line for gas. Um, Bernie Getz was a thing. He was a guy who uh, flashed some money around and then very intentionally baited some people to robbing him and he took justice into his own hands. And um, that shows itself in films of the time. You have Taxi Driver, you have um, uh, Death Wish, you have all of these films. And this is kind of a throwback to that, even to the point where uh, Robert De Niro, who was in Taxi Driver, uh, obviously has a co-starring role in Joker. Mm -hmm. Um, so what about the real life effect? I mean, we're seeing the effects of this film pouring into real life. I don't know if you saw recently, there was an article where in, I mean, over what seemed uh, about a, a dozen countries where people are using this character symbolically and you know, sometimes physically dressing up as him to embody this kind of movement. You know, I think it's important to contextualize that uh, the whole movie is about a person who is not handling their trauma well. Um, it's important to contextualize that Joker is not a aspirational character and that even though um, what we do here is we conjured the Joker as a character, we put a human face on him, which is something he's lacked before. There is no telling what the in-canon Joker origin is. It's been very famously said that even the Joker probably doesn't know where he came from depending on which canon or which, right. whether you're following the movies or the comic books or whatever. And so, I mean, I think this was a ripe character to have that, uh, have that treatment. It's a character that's open to a lot of interpretation, and it puts a human face on him. But uh, you also have to understand that that human face is very flawed, and no matter how traumatized you are, no matter how much the world has got you down, uh, reacting violently isn't necessarily the answer. Killing people, hurting people isn't necessarily the answer. For sure. Well, looks like we're running out of time here, but... We do appreciate you coming out here talking with us about the film, Trevor. Thank we you very much. The time. I did stuff with my hands and spoke. And, and that's, you know, sometimes that's all we need. <laughs> so um, next up, we're going to look at a local collector's shop, Seder's Den. From magic to pop figures to comics, Seder's Den has something for the nerd in all of us. Good morning, Vietnam. Starting Seder's Den actually was a dream of mine since I was about seven years old. Started going into comic shops, uh, speaking with the owners, and really getting into the lore of it. I can't speak for any, anybody else about why we wanted to start the start Seder's Den, but I definitely think that the town needed a store like this. Needed a, a friendly place for comics, games, stuff like that, where you don't have to feel like you are getting tested on how nerdy you are, or how much you enjoy stuff. I own another business in town and was slowly starting to build up a comic collection uh, for the specific purpose of one day opening a store. My favorite part about working here, I definitely have to say it's being around comic books. I've, I loved comic books ever since I moved out here and there's just never been a store for it. 
we run Magic games four nights a week. We run Warhammer twice a week. Warhammer 40K, the tabletop uh, model building game. Uh, we run an RPG day every Tuesday. And so we've got something going on seven days a week here. What things do we sell here? Good question. <laughs> we've got comics, we've got games, we've got collectibles. I've got new comics, old comics, weird comics. Stuff you've never heard about, I've never heard about, and anything in between. Favorite comic book, 1991's Full Killer, published by Marvel. It was a 10-run series, and it's probably the weirdest comic in the world that no one's ever heard about. Uh, guy loses his job, gets assaulted, uh, loses his wife and family because he has no money, snaps, goes into a mental institution, comes out the Full Killer. Uh, commit a crime, you must die. Any crime. Steal a car, you're a fool, you must die. Kill somebody, you're a fool, you must die. Uh, jaywalk, you're a fool, you must die. We got magic cards, we've got like weird Star Trek, like trading cards, so quest, but we got all sorts of stuff. Uh, biggest store rules here are no bullying. That's number one of everything. So you're not allowed to treat somebody different because they're different from you. This is a very welcoming, safe environment for everybody. And anyone who is bullied is warned once to stop, second time they're asked to leave. After that, be clean, come in, you know, have showered, at least attempt to, to be a clean individual. Uh, don't smelly up the place. Seder's Den has lots of cool things to offer. Don't forget to have fun and follow the rules. Come on down to 933 North Center Street. Aiden, signing off. That's all we have for you this week. Make sure you tune in next week since NCTV will be a weekly. Oh, oh boy. boy. <laughs>